<clears throat> G'day guys, so today we are talking about the lateral raise and how to go about executing this lift. Um, too many people don't realize that this lift is actually a full body lift and that if you are not uh, tight and got control and have developed loads of tension and stability through all the working joints, then you're gonna rip yourself off uh, from targeting your lateral head of, uh, your medial head of your uh, shoulders. Now, before we dive into all the joints of play, let's firstly think about our shoulders and the movement that we're doing. So, we have, we have three heads to the shoulder that are given far too much credit than they deserve. At the end of the day, these muscles are actually quite small, right? So we have our anterior head, we have our medial head, and we have our lateral head of our uh, deltoids. <clears throat> they aren't big, they're actually quite small, right? If you think about it, you compare that to say your pec, or your quads, or your hamstrings, or your glutes, they're tiny. So, too many people go and try and move the same amount of weight as they would with their chest, with their shoulders. And this is where we get issues with things like momentum, which is what we'll talk about now. So, when we do a lateral raise, uh, we, are, we are targeting abduction, right? And that's the, that's the process of taking your limbs away from your body. Predominantly what's gonna do that is obviously mainly your shoulders, but the main movement factor, or the main head of the shoulder that we're trying to attack is, is what bodybuilders refer to as your caps, or your medial head of your, your deltoids. Now, this is the movement here that we are trying to um, mimic by putting weight in our hand, right? So by doing that, we need to realize that there's no momentum, there's no swaying, there's no swinging, none of that involved. So we need to take that out of the game by shoring up our joints. First point of call when you start your setup with this, what I want you to do is screw your feet slightly into the ground so it takes away your ability to get up onto your toes. How often do you see people come up on your toes, or up on their toes? The second point is I want you to lock your knees out. Why? Because people bend with their knees. These are all cues that we're trying to create a mechanical advantage to generate more leverage and more up portion and take away the tension from our lateral head of our, or our medial head of our deltoid because the deltoid can't handle that load, which is why we start using these cues. So we're gonna screw our feet in, we're gonna lock our feet, uh, knees out. Now we also use our hips. How often do you see people use their hips? So we're gonna engage our glutes as well. So one, two, and three are all out of the game now. Now we're taking out that momentum. We can't really generate much for upward force in order to get this weight up. <clears throat> so now we're relying on our shoulder. Now what we know about our shoulders is that we uh, our shoulders can move around in all sorts of ranges of motion, so we need to create stability through that. How do we do that? Well, we put our shoulder blades back and down into our back pockets. So let's go through it again. We're going to shore up our feet by screwing them in. We're going to lock our knees out. We're going to squeeze our hips on, and we're going to pull our shoulder blades back and down. By pulling your shoulder blades back and down, it also takes away our trap involvement. So a lot of people have issues when they do this exercise that so their traps start to blow up and they can't feel it through their shoulders. Well, what do we know about our traps? Our traps do... They do predominantly two movements. Um, they also assist in other movements. But the two we're gonna talk about is scapular elevation, so the ability to shrug and also to retract. Right? They're the two predominant movements. They also help with depression of the scapula, but that's predominantly our last. So by depressing the scapula, what happens is that when we finally raise and we're pulling down, you're actually going to feel the full contraction through your shoulders and not so much through your traps. When we relax and we come up, your traps, once they hit a certain point, you're going to start taking all that load. And before you know it, we've shifted the load away from our, our delta, or media deltoid and put it into our traps. So we want to pull our shoulder blades back and down. We stabilize, we create tension, and we don't allow us to take away from that load. You can see how many factors are in a lateral raise that are trying to take away from that muscle because the muscle is so small and, there's not, and, and it doesn't have a great deal of potential or action potential. So, <clears throat> let's go through this process. <clears throat> And we'll talk about exactly where we want to finish as well. So we're going to screw our feet in, we're going to lock our knees out, and we're going to squeeze our hips through. We're going to push all the weights back and down, and we're going to come out nice and wide and back down. Now, our finish point. 
you'll see a lot of people come into the midline of their body and come back out, right? What we know about gravity is that gravity works in a horizontal plane. It does not work, um, sorry, works in a vertical plane, it does not work in a horizontal plane. So from about here through to here, the weight is now becoming relevant, okay? When we start moving in this fashion here, the weight's irrelevant, it's not, there's no resistance to it. So we're going to make our end point just outside the line of our legs. So we're gonna put our shoulder blades back and down. Our, all of our legs are gonna be nice and tight and we're gonna come up and out. Now you can see already that my pinkies are above my thumbs. This will give you a, a much more pronounced and a much, more greater, uh, much greater contraction by simply tuning, tipping your fingers up and down. Now if you wanna come out like that, that's fine. Um, however, you'll get a better contraction by simply tipping your fingers up and down. Now you can also see that I'm slightly forward. When we set up our, our <clears throat> for a little bit of shoulder health, we don't want to flap like a bird. We want to come slightly forward and you'll get a greater range of motion with that. So let's go through this process again. <clears throat> we're going to screw our feet in slightly, we're going to lock our knees out, we're going to push our hips through. We're going to pull our shoulder blades back and down and now we are set. From this position, we're going to come slightly forward and out. Now I want you to pause at the top to show you've got good control and slow down. We're going to come back down to the legs and back up. And that there is how you should be performing your lateral raises. <clears throat> when you start seeing people do these, you know that you're using momentum. So team, that is how you go about doing your lateral raises.